Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. Uh, before we start, uh, one of you, his name is Trinity, he said that he saw a video for Yusuf State and he said Quran 92 speaking about the loop of the brain. And I posted for him in the chat, I don't know if he saw my text or not, and I said, what is the name of the video? So we can give him a bump in the brain immediately. So Trinity, if you are there, give us the name of the video. You cannot post a link. Okay, live show, no problem. What was the name of the video? Because every, doesn't matter if it's show or not. It has a name of the video. Go check your history and see what the name of the video so we can get him busted. All right, I will be waiting for you because it doesn't matter what show is. It is, it is going to have a name. They don't give it one name. You know so find me the thing so we can laugh together uh, because the the chapter he is talking about have nothing to do with the brain at all and this is why we say look you see the name of the video is how, how long the nose of Muhammad but it's not only Muhammad he have a long nose I mean whoever tried to sponsor Muhammad he have to have a long nose So when this man, no, no, give me the name of the video. So we can play his video so people will laugh. Give me the name of the video. I mean, what's wrong? So we play what he said and then we can laugh. Well, there's a problem. You said the chapter 92. Did you say chapter 92 or 96? Is it 92? 96. Oh, okay, you said 96. Correct. Just to show you how those people, they lie. What the Quran speak is about the hair have nothing to do even with the head. You see, what is the title of our video? How long the nose of Muhammad. So if Yusuf state, and I know he's just copying what other people say. He's just a dummy. Say what you said that in chapter 96, verse number 16, speak about the loop of the brain. Well, let us see if we can find the loop of the brain. Even this is not my topic, but because just you mentioned it, let him get him, you know, spanked fast and easy. Uh, this is 96, and this is the verse he's talking about. Even the Muslim translation, it says sinful forelock. Do you know what forelock is? Do you know what forelock is? I mean, how is stupid those liars to make the forelock? Forelock is the hair in the front. What brain, what loop? Allah will drag him from his forelock. forelock. Read, the, read the verse before it. I mean, stupidity is amazing. The stream was live just before. Stream was live before you. Okay, no problem. Just forget. So you see here. Even the Muslim translation says this is a forelock, and forelock is a hair. Hair! Let me make it simple for the dummy. To show you what is the forelock. I mean, it's amazing when you are desperate, bankrupt. And you try to make a miracle out of anything. I mean, the, the verse saying that Allah will drag him from his hair. Suddenly, it is the brain. Hmm. Let us show you the forelock. Here we go. This is the forelock. So 
So those liars who have no dignity, they can lie as much as they want. And we can open right now and check the interpretation for the verse. And you will see all the Muslim scholars agree that this is about the front, ha front hair of the head. It's not even the head itself. So how the, the hair, how the word it says for lock, how the word it says hair, and then in a miraculous way, that became the loop of the brain. And by the way, Allah is going to drag you from your forelock. What if you are Sam Shamun? He will drag you from where? You can drag Ais Ventura. But someone like Kojak or Sam Shamun, how you can drag them? Stupid statement. And because they are bankrupt, you know, they fabricate things. So if we go right now to the Quran interpretation, does any any scholar ever say that this is not a hair? No. And this is why even their Islamic translation, all of them they agree with the word hair for luck. If we search right now for the word for luck, in case you don't speak English, what for luck is? Let us search for luck. Uh, let us search in Prophet uh, Google. What is for luck? What is for luck <laughs> okay for luck a lock of hair grow growing just above the forehead this is suddenly became a brain and a lube in the brain and the the prophet of allah in the quran he mentioned something very scientific and nobody discovered it. Which, 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 which. So the forelock became a lube in the brain. So if it's a lube in the brain, why in the translation of the Muslim says forelock? Did Allah use the wrong word? So look how big the nose of this guy, Yusuf state. Allah, he said forelock, which is here. Yusuf state he made it loop in the brain. How long his nose is. He's growing like a tree. And we can open right now, we can open any interpretation. So, and by the way, you know, this guy is just a potato. He copy what people, they say. Like, you know, they made the article. Look, here we go. I, I, I look for it. The front lobe of the brain. Region directly under God grasp. Mm -hmm. Human brain is the most substantive. Okay, and then he says, and look at the stupid, even their translation says the word forelock. <laughs> I mean, even in the in the in the in the play in the in the article where they claim the miracle, they themselves they are using the same translation forelock. So how in your translation you say forelock and then you make it the loop of the brain? And I like this brain here. Look how, how this brain is shiny. This is a brain of a very good believer. The lies is striking. Look. And if we go and read the interpretation for those verses in Ibn Kathir, let us go to Ibn Kathir. Here we go. Unbelievable. Stupidity is amazing. Okay. <sighs> Let us see, just to show you that how they lie. I mean, it's amazing. And it's amazing that we are talking about the growing nose. And here we go. Here we go. A lying cell phone forehead, meaning the forehead of Abu uh, uh, Jahel line. Okay. W which, you know, see here. 
you see the translation says forehead this is a this is a lie this is a false translation because the word the nasriya is the forelock is the hair let us go and see more hold on maybe we don't want to we don't want to judge the translator right away let us read more uh, he don't he don't have anything let us go here just to, just for a laugh just for comedy oh boy and if somebody is lying that will make his front head showing it hmm true story let us see read with me see the translator remember the translator always they play a big game in the fabrication ask yourself why in the English translation of Ibn Kathir never match the Arabic so here we size him for by his forelock that's all and verse number 16 the same nasiya the nasiya is translated as forelock same for 16 so why they lie because simply we cannot make Islam sinful forelock since when the hair is sinful do you see it so they lie my friend in order to make you believe that the God of the Quran he knew what he is talking about this is Tafsir Al-Jalalain describing of his forelock do you see it so suddenly the forelock became the brain and the brain became well. anyway let us go back to our topic how long the nose of Muhammad the funny the verse you quote for me now is talking about liars that Allah will grab the liar from his forelock huh what do you think Uh, uh dobra what those questions is about anyone will ask me questions out of the topic i will block you i am i don't want the females here to come this is not a dating place this is a warning this is a warning you come here either you want to listen and talk to us ask questions about the topic or leave don't do that again I used to have ten wives what's your business are you married before so what is this question for you want to marry me crazy people actually let me block you here we go uh, so we go back to the topic what's wrong with people we are risking our life to teach you and you are coming here to ask me silly questions do you know how dangerous what i do what's wrong with people Today we are going to share with you the amazing description of the paradise. And you know the Muslims, they bring you someone, he is blonde and white, and they put him in a TV station. This guy is a convert. So if you are a white and you are a blonde, they will give you a salary and they will give you a TV show so they can promote Islam. And now this guy, he is going to tell you how amazing it is to be a Muslim because if you become a Muslim you will go to paradise but what is paradise listen carefully of that feeling that sense of wanting it more paint us a picture of Jannah let me tell you something here in the Jannah there's a hadith the Prophet 
and that's why I mentioned this hadith in the beginning. So whatever you can imagine or speak uh, or describe the Jannah, you're not going to describe the Jannah the way is the Jannah is. Because the Prophet Sallallahu say in you know, authentic, authentic uh, hadith, he say, في الجنة, in the paradise, ما لا عين رأت. There is no such eyes can even see something like the Jannah. ولا أذن سمعت. Not even the ears, you cannot even hear about the true Jannah because the Jannah is beyond what you are hearing. ولا خطر على قلب بشر. You cannot even imagine, you cannot even describe or, or think what is the Jannah. So conclusion, you cannot describe what is in Jannah. Jannah means heaven. He just said, you cannot describe. But look what he will say after. Uh, before, let me describe something beautiful about your castle. You idiot, you just said to us, you can describe the Jannah. You just said a second ago, you cannot describe the heaven. And now the second after you say, okay, let me describe for you the heaven. But you just said you cannot describe the heaven. We cannot describe the heaven for you. You cannot, descri let me describe the heaven for you. Like what? So you cannot describe the heaven for us, but let me describe the heaven for you. The prophet said you cannot describe the heaven. And now you are describing not only the heaven, you describe the, the, the palace, the house. Look, and we are going to the details like the bedroom, the bathroom, the kitchen, you know, the faucet. But you can describe the heaven, brother. What, what a crazy religion. But anyway, go, go. It's not your fault. Muhammad is in his nose. Your castle in the Jannah. It's something so beautiful. Your castle in the Jannah has four doors. I cannot describe the heaven for you, but the, the castle has four doors. Uh, uh, why, brother, why we have four doors? You enter from one door. Mm -hmm. I thought I entered from the four at the same time. Are you serious? I have four doors from my castle. I enter only from one. What about the other three? Okay, I, am, I am one person, so for sure I will enter from one door. Let it go, man. The nose is working. And one door or one gate, your servants from... Ah, this is the door for the maids, uh, servant. Hey, servant, you go from this door, okay? In heaven, all of us, we are equal, huh? But we have servants. Look at this heaven, how nice it is, how just it is. Somebody will be sitting in his bum, eating, having sex, and somebody is a servant for eternity. And who is the servant? A little boy. That's what the Quran says, boy. Is it justice? Heaven, this is heaven. I mean, when you think about heaven, you talk about a place where there is no unjust, where there is no abuse, especially child abuse. No. In the heaven of Allah, you go to your castle, you have four doors. One door, there is 80,000 little child will be serving you. All kind of servants would come and enter. All kind of servant? Mm -hmm. what, the, what does that mean? There's many kind of them? And here you notice the stupidity and the nose of, of uh, the one who is telling the story or making the story up. If in the heaven of Allah, you don't take a shower, your clothes will never get dirty. You don't even take them off because even when you have sex, you have to wear them. It's haram. You have to have sex wearing them, you know, and you will be wearing green, green silk for eternity. You don't take it off forever. So there's no dirt. There's no shower. There's no pee. There's no poo poo. There's no garbage. So what's there? And if the food, if you wish something is going to be in front of you by saying so, Alhamdulillah, Bismillah. So what the servant will do? I mean, what, what servant will do? You tell me. Even the tree will bend down for you so you can grab the grape. So what is left? Hmm. That is a good question. Enter to help you. You have 70,000 servants. If, 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 only? You liar, why you made them 70,000? The hadith says 80,000. 
Ah, maybe Muhammad in different lie, he dropped 10,000 by mistake. So it is 70,000 in this story. Muhammad in different story, he said 80,000. Do you see why the nose grow? I mean, a prophet of God, you don't remember. Even the number of the servant. Are they 80 or 70? And why 70,000? I mean, you are alone. 70,000 little boys will serve you doing what? Two boys will drive you crazy. When I was a kid, you know, like my dad, he sent me to an area he want to buy the houses. So like, because, uh, you know, I do, I drive people crazy. People start saying their houses and we, my dad, he buy it for uh, half a price. True story. It's true story. Said Bukhari, brother. My nose is touching the screen now. <laughs> Let me push it inside. <laughs> like 70,000, I thought it is 80,000. What's wrong with you? Let us go to the hadith. Oh, the number changed. Does it say in front of me 80,000? So Muhammad knows, I think Muhammad here, his nose was longer, taller. Because in the story, this guy he mentioned, by the way, he is not, I mean, he is telling what Muhammad said, he's right. Muhammad said in different story, 70,000. But in different story, he says 80,000. This is what happened when you are a liar, you don't remember. Is it 70,000? It is, I mean, there is eight, there's 10,000 different men. It's not like one, two people, three people. There's 10,000 different. So what happened? He dropped 10,000 by, maybe that is tax. Hmm. Any Muslim have a comment? Yeah, we don't we do not tell people that we are going to go live, but always you have to be expecting me to go live anytime, you know, because if I feel like I can go, then I will go. So always turn on your notification or check our Patreon so you can be updated. 80,000 boys, 72 wives, and you are going to live in a tent. But the guy, he just told us, you have a castle. Is it a tent or a castle? Because as I know, there's a huge difference between a tent and a castle. Do you see how the light changed? Depends in the, the time he's reporting. In one place, he says a castle. In the other place, he says a tent. And the tent is made from pearl. Made from pearl. Finally, I will be a turtle. People, you will be living like a turtle. Inside the shell made from, it's like a tent, yeah. How many of you dream to be a turtle? Like, uh, what her name? Uh, Balusi. People die, people come, but Lucy is there in her shell. So you are now going to go to heaven and you have a tent made of pearl. Oh, Sally is trying to save them. He said the castle is inside the tent. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I like you, John. Unbelievable. Remind me to cut to three dollars from your salary. What are you talking about, John? What that what what the castle inside the tent? <laughs> anyway. So what? What what? Yeah, tell us more.
Uh-huh. True story. Servants in the paradise, in that castle. 70,000. 70,000 in that paradise. Imagine this. Imagine. And one door, this one door you enter, one door your servants, and one door there is a special angel will come to you every Friday. Hold on. Every Friday. Party, party, party time. Every Friday. So now you are telling me how much fun is the heaven. I have a castle, have four doors. And then I have 70,000 little boys will drive me nut inside my house, jumping over my shoulders like rabbits. I have 72 wives, at least, because 80,000, by the way, is the lowest reward. This is not the reward for the good Muslim. This is for the bad one. Read carefully. The least of the people, the least of the people are dies. This is why Muhammad, he said, the heaven have 100 floor. And the one who is in the high floor can visit the one in down floor, but the one in down floor, he cannot go to the up floor. Why? Because you have better entertainment in the upper floor. Better reward. Let us continue. Shall we continue? I don't know how many of you are already convinced to become a Muslim, but I hope so soon. Every Friday, they come and they visit you on the Friday, have a small card in his hand. That angel have a beautiful small card in his hand. See? Business cards was exist in the time of Muhammad. Every, every, you know, Friday, uh, you know, the, the angel come to your door. You knock at your door. And he have a card in his hand. Like, what is the card said? And guess what is written in that? No way, I cannot guess. I mean, come on. You see, you told us nobody can describe heaven. You told us it's impossible to describe how amazing the heaven. And now you know even what is inside the card. Even what is in the card, you know what is written there. I mean, obviously nothing. Obviously the heaven is, we can't describe it. That's it. We can't describe it to the point we know even what is in the pocket of the angel. And what is written in the pocket of the angel. And what is written in the card of the angel, which he did not show us to yet. And we did not even go to the heaven yet. But we know what is in the card. True story. In the card. It is a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No Facebook. All the style message. Can't Allah create a Facebook page and send like one tweet or tweet or something? And then all the Muslim will know, hey, you are invited, come over. So, how many angels we need to spread those cards? Let us say we have three, uh, by the time of uh, the Judgment Day, let us say maybe we'll have a three billion Muslims. Okay. We need three billion angels to serve cards every Friday. And every Friday, the same card will be delivered. I mean, isn't it enough to tell him every Friday we have a party? No, every Friday he will tell you, knock at your door. You know, you were having boom, boom. I mean, what a Friday, by the way. Isn't it Muhammad? He said you will have 70 years orgasm. How we will have 70 years orgasm. And then every Friday we are going to go and visit Allah. Are we going to cut the orgasm? And then we go to the party. And then we come back and we continue. Because remember, it says 70 years. And this is every Friday. Like what? I'm getting dizzy here. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Message from Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Abdi, in that card. Abdi, that's my servant. In another riwayah, call it Tirmidhi, Abdana. This is my 
my honored servants. I miss you. Allah will send you a card. He says to you, I miss you. I miss you. Fazurni. Look here, look. Look the emotion. I feel like I want to cry now. I miss you. Okay, and what we will do? Let us see what we will do. And so, come and visit me. Uh -huh. Allah send you this. The creator of the heavens and earth, he's calling. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> the creator of the earth, the, cre the one he created, create everything. He said, come and visit me. We get it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Thank God I don't live in the 40th floor. Because I feel like I want to jump from the window. I mean, but because you know what? If he is with me, his nose will help me to touch the floor before I land down. I'm sure your nose is exists for a reason. Excited if say the president was saying, "Hey, look, I want to have a meeting with you." <laughs> this Imagine. is the creator. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> Allah Subhanahu wa Taala Himself send you this message with a small card. My servant is stuck to. I miss you. Come and visit me. Okay. The fourth door, you will go out from your castle to visit the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The moment you put... Look, 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 look. Now we understand why you have four doors. One to enter. And other one is to leave. <laughs> and one for the angels and one for the, for the, for the servant. What do you mean one door for the servant? Isn't it the servant inside my house? I mean, is my house in the street or the opposite? Because if there is a door and the servant will enter from that door to me, and that is the door of my house, that means the servant, they are homeless. So I have in the front of my house 70,000 homeless servant and they are behind the door of my house. And they are in the street, literally. See what happened when nobody uses a brain? I know many people, they watch those things, but they don't notice how stupid it is. Because people decide not to think. Yeah, nobody wanna think. Put your right foot outside the house. Stop! Your right foot. You cannot do use the, the, the uh, left foot. You cannot? Dangerous. Never enter with your left foot. Or get out, I mean. That's deep. If you remember, there is a video about entering the bathroom. Let us see if we can find the hadith, I mean the, the video. Okay, I think we found it. <clears throat> Let's see. I'm looking for the story. I mean, Muhammad, you don't lie. Muhammad knows it's not really long. I mean, you are mistaken. And this story is proving the point. With your left foot. The left foot you went in, you get a reward for the See? toilet. See, you enter to Allah with the right foot. You enter the bathroom with the left foot. 
Are we taking notes? When we enter into Allah, we enter with the right foot. But if you enter the bathroom, you enter with the left foot. Why? Let us see why. You know, Bismillah, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubuthi wal khabaith. So Allah protect me from these devils. Before you enter the bathroom, you have to say this prayer. Otherwise, Shaitan, he would do something bad for you. And then you enter with the left foot. You have to follow step by step. You, you go in there with your left foot. The left foot you went in, you get a reward for that. The dua you... Listen carefully. When you... I cannot find the video for anyone without seeing my voice. I mean, I'm looking for the guy video. And here we go. It's me talking again. Can't even I find the video without me talking? Okay, hold on. Let's skip uh, this guy. Christian Brands. Let me play it. Let me play it. Go learn English first. Play it. You get a reward for that. Right the away. dua you said, Shaitan will not see you. You're in the toilet, Shaitan can't see you anymore. That's in a hadith. Finally, you're invisible. Finally, you're invisible. You say the prayer before you enter the bathroom with the left foot. You're invisible. How many of you would like to be invisible, especially in Friday night, so you can skip the house and leave the house and your wife don't see you? Be honest with me. How many of you would like to be invisible and get out so nobody can see you? Like your wife, she hears the door is open, but, but she sees nobody. Like, what is that? She, she like... She will freak out, like, you know, like, okay, the door is open, the door is closed. My husband is gone, but I didn't, I did not see him left. What is, what, is the, what is the husband? You became invisible. But remember, you have to do it with the left foot. And this is additional proof that Muhammad don't lie. You can try it. Okay, I want you to do something. Go and get a camera, put it in the bathroom. Hmm? And then say the prayer, A'uzu billahi min al-khubti wal khaba'ith, Allahumma jandibna, whatever. And then enter the bathroom with the left foot. Remember, left foot, huh? If you enter with the right foot, it will not work. The camera will capture you. Enter with the left foot after you say the prayer, and you have to say it in Arabic. If you don't speak Arabic, <laughs> you got busted. <laughs> Sorry for you. <laughs> You have to learn how to say it in Arabic, even if your Arabic is funny, like my English. And the second you enter the bathroom, you became invisible. Now, why Allah will make you invisible from Satan? Muhammad will explain to us. Right? If you don't... It's in the hadith, remember. So, if... Oh, this guy, somebody tell him to go. I mean, I cannot find the original video. He, he, he said to you, this is what the hadith says, because they start laughing, you know, those Muslims. And they could not believe what they are hearing. So he said, this is what the Hadith says. This is what the Hadith says, which means what the Prophet said. Don't laugh. The Prophet says so. If you if you enter with the right... Oh, come on, man. Let me skip this guy. Ah, you said Shaitan will not see you. You're in the toilet. Shaitan can't see you anymore. That's in a Hadith, right? If you don't say the Dua, if you don't say the Dua, what happens is the Shaitan not only comes inside but the hadith of tidmidi says he plays with your bowels that's bad that's bad so now you are in the bathroom i mean this is need some inter uh, interpretation How I'm going to explain this to those people who have no education? Those people have no education.
Okay, we find a solution for this. So you are sitting in the twelfth seat. Now in the time, you know, the the, the, the Arabian twelfth seat is not really so it's seat. You you sit. You sit. You just sit. Sit like you know, like you bend your your your. I don't know how to describe. Like you know, you go down with your whole body, and you do poo poo. There's not twelfth seat. This is something we learn from the Western. All right. So you are sitting, but just to make it more acceptable, not this, this too much disgusting. So now you are sitting in the twelfth seat, peace upon him. And you did not say the prayer which the prophet said to you to say before you enter the bathroom. Shaitan, now he's active. He can see you. Remember, if you say the prayer, you are invisible. The twelfth seat is empty. There's nobody there. He can't see you. <laughs> and if he can't see you, he can't harm you. Hello? But now he can see you. So Shaitan, peace upon him, he will go inside the toilet seat and he will come from underneath of your bum. And then he will play with your bowels. He will enter. The situation is very dangerous. And the story of the prophet is must be true. And if any of you don't believe it, you have mental problem. The chat is crazy. I'm almost done anyway. I mean, how long the nose of a prophet Muhammad is? And how in the world people in the year 2020, they believe it, 21? In which century we are? The story is endless and the stupidity is endless too. So now, Shaitan, you enter the bathroom. By the way, how come atheists, Christians, Buddhists don't feel anything in their bowels? They don't say the name of Allah before they enter the bathroom, and they don't care if it's a left foot or right foot. But we are fine. I mean, any of you, you know, experience such an experience when you go to the bathroom? He plays with the bowels. So you're inside there, you're thinking you're going to be out there in five minutes. He's taking you 20 minutes and you're still not halfway there. You know why? Because Uncle Shaitan is going, ooh, ooh, la la. What is that? How truthful the Prophet in his stories. You are now in the bathroom. And Shaitan is uh, uh. there's no way Muhammad is lying. All those stories are proven to be scientifically active and true. There's a scientist, you know, his name is Japanese. You know, he have to be Japanese this time because we did use German with use French, but this time I have to be Japanese. His name Yama. I do lie Yama. You know, you know Yama Yahoo. You know, you know, all Japanese, like, you know, Yama, Yahoo, Yaba, Yala Lulu, you know, something like that. I mean, I don't know what that name, but this is how their names, we can change it. You know, this is their culture, my friend. This is their culture. So his name is Yama, I do lie Yama. Okay. The scientist, Yama, I do lie Yama, who his nose is Yama growing nose Yama. This is his cousin, the nose thing, you know. Yama knows growing knows Yama. This is his cousin. He approved that this is a true story and proven to be accurate. See, we love we love the Muslims, and because we love them, we're trying our best to show them how this is stupid, my friend. How how you can believe such a, such a man is a prophet? 
and then he wants you to go and do jihad and fight and kill for him and you die and you where you go the funny Muhammad he ordered you to go and die for him but he never goes for war as old cowards he watched from behind So I wanted to stay with you longer and I said to me and to myself that Yama I want to stay Yama he told me that you better stop here because the nose is going to break the screen and go out of my house after reading all those true stories so based in the evidence that the Prophet Muhammad is the truthful teller of truth nobody is truthful like Prophet Muhammad we have to admit we have to stop here now this video is going to be deleted very soon so don't forget to download it maybe in half hour an hour maximum I will take it down so take it download it share it with your friends you don't even need to download it in your positive video keep it in your computer show it to your family so they can see what Islam is about I remember once I was doing a seminar in the Philippines and people in the in the church I played for them uh, some videos like those people they fall in the floor literally from laughing and they were sweating like crazy you know it's a hot country and especially with my comment you know like my comment I was inspired by Yama uh, Yama peace upon him you know so the video is a stupid my comment is make it more crazy people go crazy have fun we are in the zoo so my friend if you are not really convinced that the prophet is a prophet I give you all the evidence proving to you that he must be coming from God if those serious evidence are not enough for you to believe in Islam there is something wrong with you and with your nose remember uh, the, the guy who said I don't believe in this you know let me remind you what your wife says about you you are nosy do you remember what she said to you you are nosy not because you ask her where she go why she is late no she's talking to who no but because your nose is growing, the one who don't believe in Prophet Muhammad, his nose is growing because he's a liar. The Prophet is telling the truth. You are nosy. And I will not be surprised if, you know, one day, like, you go and, uh, you know, like, uh, you, you know, your wife, she asks you why you are late. You say, I was uh, washing dishes. And then she closed the, the door of the van on your nose because you are lying. You were not washing dishes. You were playing games. This is why the Prophet Muhammad, his nose never been harmed because his nose was very short. He never lied. You can't even see it. So small. It's like a little bird. It's like a peak of a bird. Because the more he tell the truth, the more his nose shrink. And obviously all those stories are truthful stories. Don't forget to download the video. Share it with your friends because we will take it down very soon. And with this, I want to say, I wish you a great Friday night, evening. It's almost middle of the night. And uh, I will see if we can come tomorrow. Subscribe, and if you are not, if you are a subscriber, uh, don't forget to unsubscribe. And uh, then in the chat says, I subscribe. And that will make you feel it, how your nose grow for lying not telling the truth. So thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you all. And may, may the Lord help the Muslims. They are poor people, need our help, need education. And remember, we are not, this is not to make fun of them. This is to make fun of the liar Muhammad. Muhammad is a liar. He needs to expose. exposed. They are victims of the lies of this man. And if you are a Muslim who is listening, for God's sake, do you really believe in those stories? And if you say to me, I don't listen to the hadith, will the Quran say the same? The Quran says, Allah will give you a bracelet. Quran says, I will give you a bracelet of gold and silver in the heaven. So now you are in heaven and now you are wearing a bracelet. What do you would do with the bracelet? A house, the brick of the house, one brick of gold, one brick of silver. I mean, this is the most annoying house. Ugly. 
what is the value of gold and silver in heaven? So pray for the Muslim to see the truth and the truth will set them free. With this, I say to you, thank you very much. God bless you and see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is a false religion, false cult. And Muhammad knows is so long. Even I heard that the cable company are thinking to use his nose for oil production. Thank you. Take care.